Right guys, uh, been a while since we talked. Thought we'd do a little walk around here. It's uh, 2022, it's uh, August the, what's today, probably the 11th? 11th or the 12th of August. August 22, the years just keep passing by. <laughs> wow. All right, so the bike's now uh, 22, this is 13. We're looking at nine years old, man nine years old because that's what kawasaki's do they make it to nine years old without any trouble so i thought we'd do a little walk around here with the mods and everything we'll walk around it real quick and then we'll talk about uh each thing we're gonna do the whole thing so if you're not prepared for a long one then uh it's a good time to bow out because i guess there's a lot of stuff going on here um we'll probably start here at the front We'll run around it. All right, let's start here. Um, of course, the windshield's a different shield. Um, the reason I did a different shield is I need a little more height uh, because what I did, I mounted a GPS on this unit uh, there in between the bags. That's actually a seven inch GPS. Um, LX Lite made these four and a halves. Uh, those are, uh, they've got an amber ring around them, um, and they've also got a white ring around them, and a red demon eye inside, which I don't use a demon eye. Actually, I do use a demon eye, I lied to y'all. What I did with my, that one function of these lights is I added it to my alarm. So whenever I arm my alarm, that's the way it arms. So, and if you look deep, you can see the red tint. So that's the way I wired those. I've still got the amber light uh, that I'm using as a running light. We might get to that. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, these are Nomad housings here. This is a Nomad housing. This is a Curiocan bezel. Uh, you can buy these extension pieces here. Uh, Amazon, Curiocan, wherever they sell Curiocan parts. The reason I like it is it's got this little gap. That little gap actually allows light to shine through. So there's actually some light that comes off the side. Got LED lights on the inside here. These are uh, switchbacks. They light up white. And then uh, the center is amber on a turn signal. Um, I believe they're LX light also. Uh, if you go to Amazon, uh, just type in LX Lite, you're going to see a lot of Jeep parts. Um, that's kind of what LX Lite concentrates on is Jeep, uh, but they also do a lot of motorcycle stuff, mostly aimed at Harley Davidson, you know, like everybody in the world. This thing's actually set up for auto arm, so that's the reason it just did that. It arms on its own after a little while. So... Let's keep on going. Okay, we took out some lights. This, of course, comes with the set, too. That's a 7-inch uh, headlight. Um, LX light again. You can, buy, you can buy them separate. You can buy it as a kit. Um, so we took care of the signal. Of course, I'm using some horns here. These are some cheap horns from Amazon. I know there's a company that does Moto Horn. I've never heard of Moto Horn li uh, live and in person, so I don't know how they sound live and in person. Uh, on the internet, they sound absolutely amazing. They sound super duper loud. Don't know if that's the way they sound in real life. But my guess is, is that a Moto Horn and these Amazon horns or other air horns are pretty much the same thing. These are very loud. I've got two of them. Got one on each side. The reason I did that is... There's two reasons I did that. Just for uniformity of the look, number one, for where I was mounting them. Because they look like, hey, we halfway belong here. And number two is, if for some reason a compressor failed on one, I've still got an air compressor on the other one. So I've still got a horn either way. Um, you know, just in case something falls out or something. For those of you that have uh, air horns, the Wolos and the Bad Boys, uh, the Stebbles, if you've got those out in the open, I would totally recommend you blow them um, at least, you know, every other ride or something, once a week or something. 
because what typically happens with those uh, those type of horns is they get air in those uh, air compressors and that's what faults them out a lot of times so by winding them around you're actually circulating some air in there and, and hopefully getting some of that water out so that they don't fail on you uh, like so many people have those failures all right so we took care of some horns those are just they're, they're really no name horns before the uh, bear shelves Biden uh, world uh, those you could probably get them for about twenty dollars each complete that's the the uh, the, the horn, that's the compressor, that's the hose, everything. Uh, they're probably in the 35 each range now, I guess. So uh, Bear Shelves did it again. He made that happen for us. All right, side over here. These are some lights. Amazon again. Um, man, I couldn't tell you who made these. These are pretty Chinese-based uh, company did it, I know. The only bad thing with these lights on these bars is the thin gauge wire it's extremely hair thin gauge wire that you need to be very very careful with and you need to really protect after you put them together because uh, they are they're they're easily breakable and just take your time with it and cover them up and just make them as strong as you can make them i actually tried to get as away from as much of it as I could as you can tell I did that that vibration kind of I got it set pretty pretty high um all right I'm not going any further that way we still got stuff to talk about up here so let's talk about this this is uh fender trim um and you'll never believe this I can't think who made this right there right this second it's gonna come to me in a second I know it will um but they're, they're it's it's uh metal and it's chrome it's not plastic or anything it's actually metal i can't believe i can't think of the name of the company that made it right this second they've been around forever don't get old that's that's the key to this video today don't get old all right so anyway you get a front fender tip and you get a rear fender tip with the fronts on these I've also got the rear piece once we get to the back. Maybe by then it'll come to me who made it. I hope. Maybe it won't. <laughs> Somebody else will know, I'm sure, in this video. Maybe they'll comment it. All right, so anyway, those two pieces. Uh, man, I don't know how much they are. I'm not going to even try to tell you anymore because I don't know. Uh, the reflectors just blacked it out. That's actually some tin in there. Um, I don't know if it's really reflective now because of of that uh, I've never shined a light on it to see how much reflection it actually gives what I did is I bought some of those blue um, police officer type line thin blue line stickers I really like those stickers I like the way that they look on the bike um, I like the way they reflect um, and I think they just look awesome so I just put some on the bottom of these reflectors with that black so it kind of highlights I've got them a couple of other spots on the bike as well but um good highly reflective stuff um looks good on the forks to me i've also got some bicycle reflection there um if i didn't tell you it was there most people that walk by would never even know it was there because you really have to kind of be looking for it to see it but it's got a lot of reflection uh of course the other big thing is the 19 inch front wheel uh, that's a 19. Um, had it for a while now, actually. Uh, we're probably looking at uh, two or three years that that's been on the bike. I don't have ABS on my bike, so I don't have the whole problem of trying to make the, the sensors work. But that is a 19-inch Harley-Davidson Enforcer wheel, if you were interested. To be honest, I have another one. I, I recently ran across one, and I went ahead and bought it. It has not been uh, set up for this bike, but I do have it. If anybody's interested, um, let me know. Um, maybe we can work out a deal. But the key with these, there's actually a YouTube video somewhere on this matter. Uh, basically what you're going to have to do to make a Harley Davidson wheel fit is you're either going to have to take uh, about an eighth of an inch off of your brake mounts here, one spot and one spot. 
uh, to make it fit or you're going to have to take it off the wheel itself. Um, those are your two options. This particular one is taken off the wheel. So every one of these float, this is actually a floating rotor. So it mounts just here. It's not touching the hub, this whole rotor. It just, it mounts in a different spot on the wheel. It floats. So it's got five different mounts. Uh, so each one had an eighth of an inch taken off. And the reason for that is so that the brake will actually uh, center up with the rotor. If we didn't take that eighth off, we would not be able to fit it in the rotor back there. So it's got to fit in the rotor. Where is my rotor? I mean my caliper. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can. I think I see one of the brake pads on the left side of the screen there. So that's that. And then of course you need to either rework your um, your spacers or get some new ones made. Um, those are made uh, from a company on eBay. I think they charge like 12 bucks for each spacer. And the dimensions are on that YouTube video if you just search for a HD Enforcer wheel on a Kawasaki Vaquero or a Voyager, one of the two. Um, so this side, we pretty much, we've taken care of that. Let's keep on going. Of course, trim, chrome trim. This is just door trim for a car just around. Uh, back the other side, we still got a light there. It's got some door trim going down there. Jeez, that thing is sensitive. Alright, so this is a Kuriak in uh, stirrup uh, highway pegs. Uh, I don't know how much they run anymore. Prices are just so crazy anymore. You just, what it used to be isn't what it is anymore. Seems like this is probably $100 or so. Well, I take that back. Probably about $150 new. Some things for this bike that I know are probably in good shape. You know, it's pretty tough to make. <laughs> that thing's annoying. It's tough to uh, really, you know, make these things look bad other than normal wear and tear. These actually came used off of eBay, and uh, I probably gave 75 for them. Um, probably 75 I think they came with the, the whole setup. Um, so I think it was 75. The good thing with this particular, um, uh, style is they are not copied. Um, the Chinese haven't copied this particular style. Man, that thing is sensitive. But now the regular Kuriak and Dooleys, you're going to find just the Dooleys have been copied. Just everybody has copied them. So you don't really always know that you're actually getting the, the actual Kuriak and, uh, brand. Uh, the good thing with Kuriakin is they last forever. I tell people all the time, if you're going to do clamps, clamps, Kuriakin. Don't waste your time with the Chinese stuff. Get the Kuriakin. They've got some uh, extra parts in there, extra components that really make that thing grab. Whereas the Chinese just, they simply have a clamp, and once that bolt goes through, they're hoping that it's going to clamp tight. Kiriakin actually has teeth that help it to actually clamp and hold together. Uh, this is something anybody can do right here. Um, these are actually pockets. They match up right up here. Those pockets down here are actually a windshield bag. And uh, just tore the windshield bag apart. And we're just keeping the bags down here. Um... These bags are pretty doggone cheap. Uh, this is probably HTMT or something. Harley Davidson uh, parts maker uh, out of China. So they make these windshield bags. So I'm thinking 29 to 35 bucks for the whole bag, for the whole setup. That'd be two bags and a center pouch. Um, if you're thinking about doing them, they don't fit perfectly. But, you know, nothing really ever does. Speaker on the side, I of course did a big air kit, so that's the reason I have all this available space. Um, 
and we'll get to that once we get on the other side we'll talk about my big air kit this is just fiberglass um a fiberglass sub enclosure it's not going to put out a ton of base because it doesn't have a lot of air space in here um man that's probably three tenths of a cubic foot or something um this this sub probably needs about one and a half to two cubic feet to really perform very well so i just don't have the space you you can't bring it out anymore because then your leg's going to hit so you're you're kind of you're stuck but it does fairly well it, it performs eh, adequately uh floorboards those are curiac and flame boards i think they've been discontinued um there was another guy and he man i wish i could remember what his name is now but he actually took some harley boards and he he made them work down here phoenix uh arizona is where he's out of and maybe he'll comment on this video i don't know but he's got a custom vaquero um that looks really good um that he actually did some harley front floorboards on because the good thing with harley davidson is they've got so many parts and they're just so affordable compared to what specific things for this bike cost uh, because with harley davidson you're going to sell a million parts with the kawasaki voyager you're going to sell a couple of hundred parts so the tooling's a lot different that thing is sensitive. I need to change that a little bit. Alright, so these are also Kuriakin boards. Um, Y'all have to look them up. I have no idea what the part number on this is or anything else. Um, they've got these retractable pegs which are sold separate from the boards. But uh, I had these on my last bike and got them for my wife. But what happens is these can not be used your foot's just down or we can kick them out now you've got a whole platform for your passenger stretch your legs out um, the only thing is if you're stretching your legs out you know whenever you go to stop you need at least a little bit of space in here uh, to put your feet down but that's the floorboard it's a good looking board it's a good looking board all right, uh, where are we at now, y'all? Let's talk on, talk on, talk on. Six and a half speakers in the bags. Um, really haven't seen anybody doing it. Uh, in Vaquero land, they do it because engineered adapters, they actually made a pod for their bags. Um, six and a half on the Voyager is very difficult to do because the bags because of how they seep in right there. If you can tell right here, my hand actually goes up under that speaker a bit. So it's it's tough to get a six and a half to fit. Flush, a five and a quarter fits perfect. Okay, if you want to do a five and a quarter in this bag, cut out the hole, it's gonna sit flat, everybody's gonna be happy. Six and a half, got another video on this. Six and a half, the key is you got to get some spacer adapters. So what this adapter right here does that's the reason they're so tall, because there's an adapter in here. What it actually does is it takes a five and a quarter hole and it makes it into a six and a half inch speaker adapter. So your, your cutout doesn't have to be as wide and as large. So it, for this particular situation, it makes it so that we could put a six and a half in there and actually halfway make it look decent and fit tweeters whenever I put this speaker together um, and the reason I did a component set on the rear is this is a solid speaker these are not waterproof speakers um, and with a coax speaker what you have is you've got that tweeter right there in the center so around that tweeter you've got a, an actual bit of a hole so when rain comes in or water of any kind gets in there it can work its way right between the tweeter and the woofer, so you might get some bag leakage. So rather than deal with all that, I just did components. Um, I've kind of weatherproofed these with some Scotch Guard. Um, it's working for me. 
Um, you know, other people it might not work. Uh, if you're in Seattle or something and it rains every day, you never know, it might not work for you. But that's the reason I did a component. So the tweeters, I didn't have anywhere down here for them. It just, it wasn't gonna look right. It just wasn't gonna be right. So what I had decided a long time ago was I would put them in the seat. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, cut a hole here in the seat, mounted the tweeters, and uh, it all basically goes together. You know, a lot of things we don't ever show for how we've done things. The wiring, there's there's a quick uh, release wires down there so we can remove the bags and everything. But all the wiring's down there, so tweeters, components, all wired in that same spot. Um, lighting, <coughs> excuse me got some lights right here uh, when I start the bike we'll try to look at them but those are some Amazon items again it's pretty cheap um, custom dynamics actually makes a set that are specifically for a Harley Davidson uh, Indians all those kinds of things but of course I'm probably not gonna fit our bike without some serious uh, work so this is just a flexible light um, kind of like it. it it actually puts out a lot and it's been a good light it's uh, been on there for a year or two without any trouble cobras those are uh, four inch um cobras i don't know how much they run anymore i'd be scared to look <laughs> they're probably in the 600 hundred dollar range i'd imagine high five six yeah they're getting on up there uh but shark roads actually makes um, some exhaust now if you're interested in shark roads uh, pretty inexpensive um, I haven't heard any complaints about shark roads they do a black and chrome they do a chrome uh, exhaust system so uh, if you want to save some money shark roads is a good way to go I mean when you really think about exhaust there's really nothing to it it's just a pipe for God's sakes that somebody put chrome on uh, fifth grader could probably do it if they had all the tools. I don't have the tools. I wish I could chrome. That would be awesome, but can't. All right, this is light bar. Um, this is actually a three, um, three stage light. Basically, you've got a running light, you've got a turn signal, and you got a brake light. So you've got three things that it does on two wires so the way it does that is I've actually got there's a there's a run turn signal module uh, that you can buy or a brake turn module you can buy from motorcycles Curiocan makes one I'm sure some of these other big named electronics uh, manufacturers make some too I didn't go that direction um, what I'm using is a trailer module like you put on your truck when you're toting a trailer, um, you know, pulling a trailer. It's a module for just that. It takes your existing wiring for your brake light and your signals. You run it through a module. The module takes your brake and your turn light and it puts it as one. So whenever you're using your turn signal and your brake light, the turn signal is going to flash. It's just how it works. It's, it's a very cheap thing um kurt makes them um some other trailer module uh, trailer wiring type people make them also i don't have a kurt in here right now i actually can't think of the name of the companies i used the only thing is if you're going to do leds you're going to need a different module you got to pay attention if you're going to do the trailer module if you're using regular lights or you're using led lights because it's a good chance it's not going to work with led all the time you got to make sure that uh you know what you're getting one more thing, guys. It's not very red, right? Um, this is... That's not red. That's a black tint. Um, I got tint from Amazon. It's not window tint. This is a different company. I uh, can't think of the na their name. It's a little bit thicker, but it's black vinyl tint. So, it just... it. It's not red anymore. It's a it's a black, and if you look real deep, you can kind of see the red through there with your LEDs. I try to get this thing going in a little while. I know it's been 25 minutes we've been talking, so um, 
I'll try to get something at the end. Trunk. Oh, man, rack. Trunk rack. That is a stealth trunk rack. That is, uh, if you type in Kawasaki Voyager, you're not going to find this rack because it definitely does not fit this bike. <laughs> um, but it can fit this bike. Um, the top pieces or something I added. That's that's just chrome trim. Um, I like black and chrome. That's just me. What it actually comes is just black. It's all black. So, um, and they're they're about eighty dollars or so. Um, but you're gonna have to come up with a system to mount it, uh, either with just some washers or some stands, something. Um, even cabinet knobs might be an, an option. I actually ordered some cabinet knobs for this thing to mount it up here. So those are all your options. Functionality, um, not sure how great it's gonna be. Um, I think it would hold some of the stuff that I would be wanting to carry would probably just be a bag, um, just a round duffel style, style bag, highway bag. Um, but for anything else, I don't know, you know, how great it would be. You'd have to really strap it down, which, you know, it's it's all hollow up under here. So you're going to be able to put, you know, your your uh, your tie downs into it uh, without too much trouble. Um, we didn't talk about the reflector there. That still is just that bicycle stuff. Chrome trim on the side of the bags there. Um... Uh, so we already talked about speakers this side. We shouldn't really have to talk about a lot, huh? Seat, of course, this isn't the factory seat That is done by a guy uh, Here in my area in Florence, South Carolina um, And if you'd like to see any of his work, I think he did a great job with my seat um, I think he did a good job uh, Got silver stitching and black stitching Got silver in the black he did all that. I'm not going to say how much, but I think I got a pretty doggone good deal. But his name is Scott, and he runs Slim's Cycle Upholstery on Facebook. If you look up Slim Cycle Upholstery, that might be one of the easier ways to get a hold of him. Uh, but I think he's a fair guy, um, and I think he does pretty doggone good work. Pretty good work. All right, uh, where are we at now? We don't need the floor birds. Intake, air kit. Um, again, you look up uh, Kawasaki Voyager, you're not gonna find this particular air kit. There is a company that of course makes air kits for these uh, Voyagers and Fiqueros. I didn't like the way that any of theirs looked um, and I thought they were very much overpriced. Just my take on it. This is a air kit for a Harley Davidson Sportster, I believe. A 1200 Sportster, I believe, is probably what this is actually for. Which it doesn't matter what it's for. It can be for anything. Because if you're going to do it this way, what you're going to do is get rid of part of the air kit. And the part that you're getting rid of is the part that specifies what model it's for. And that's the back plate. That's what it... Um, attaches to your throttle body <clears throat> what I did is I had a local machine shop machine me this back plate this is actually the back plate now for my air kit so me and these guys they've done a couple things for me pretty affordable um, thought about it actually mass produced some one time you know a couple at least I actually sold one on eBay not sure who got it but I uh, never heard any more about it. But this kit, um, the air kit when I bought it, it was like 110 bucks. So it was 110 for the kit plus whatever I had to put in for uh, labor and material costs there. But they did that center, that plate, right? The spatial plate, aluminum, uh, and they did the whole thing so it would fit together. Um, any stickers you see, that's eBay stuff, man. That's my South Carolina state flag right there. Of course, we still got the windshield bags on this side. Q 
Kiriakin again, brake pad, full boards, Kiriakin. All right, let's work our way up here. Of course, we got some LEDs on the bike. You probably can't see them if I don't point them out, but there's one right there. LED. Uh, Kiriakin mirrors. These are Kiriakin mirrors. Those are industrial or industry something. Kiriakin. If you look them up, you'll see something like that. The bars are Harley Davidson style. Um, again, the bars, talk about them kind of like we did with this air kit. I just don't foresee myself spending the kind of money on those bars that, that people are wanting. So, these are actually 12 inch bars. Um, don't know the name, they came from China. Um, and it's some of my other videos. This is the third set of bars for me. I had factory bars, I had a set of 10 inch bars. Um, then I had those chrome beach style, you know, awesome bars. I love those chrome with the bar across the, the top. And then I had these. So if you want to count the factories, actually, this is my fourth set. So these are 12s. Um, and of course, I'm using some different risers. That's the way I can make this work. So I'm not going to go into that anymore. There's actually a video probably on that kind of stuff. Kenwood uh, deck. Um, also got a five channel amp with this bike, uh, five channel clearing amp, and that's what runs it all. So I've got four speakers, all JBL on the four. Uh, that's a six and a half JBL. The rears, of course, are the six and a half JBLs. And then I've got the eight inch pulk. So I'm running a five channel amp, um, marine grade amp made by uh, Clarion. Um, cup holder, cheap. It's actually made for a bicycle. Love it. Best cup holder I've ever had. I've got a hundred dollar Kiriakin cup holder right now that uh, I have never mounted because I hated the way it looked. Um, I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I just, to me, it looks, makes me just look, I don't know, it just makes the bike look like an. I don't know. It just, it, it's not for me. I'll just say that. But, uh, so this came as a pack of two. Uh, got one here. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's one actually right there as well. And the good thing with these things is if you want to pull them off real easy, it's got two Velcro straps and one on the top here. Pull it all apart. Take it off with you. But, as you can tell, I mean, it's, it's a solid cup holder got insulation in there um, you can fit a lot of different sizes in there and it'll hold them pretty well uh, still Kiriak in the side with the mirrors other thing I did with these these are actually not the factory bolts anybody that once you decide you're going to change the fluid one time you'll be ready to get rid of those jizz uh, Phillips head screws um, and, and when you're taking those screws off the factory it's best to use the the driver that's in your toolkit that came with the bike um, because you are going to tear up some bits I mean tear up some screws with American bits uh, but once you get those off my recommendation is just take one of those uh, Phillips screw heads go up to your local hardware store or get online um, figure out what the size of them you know is and uh, just order you some new ones these are actually stainless steel Allen head all the way around so it makes it a lot easier to get back in there. These are actually extended brake lines also. Um, Galfer. GalferUSA.com. Um, stainless steel. Uh, front brake over there. That's stainless steel brakes. Got the clutch. Probably added about four inches on each of those. Three or four. And then my rear. I also have one for the rear there. Stainless steel. And of course you could do all sorts of colors. You could do blue. You could do silver you can do you know whatever color you want now is that all guys that's got to be it it's been a long day it's been a long video the pouches of course we already talked about those this is just a gps system that's uh put on um i used to have a five and a half inch gps wanted a little bigger so we went with the seven um it's working out pretty well actually that's 7 inch. I, I really like that extra screen. Um, it's 
it's working well. Ah, something else we didn't talk about on the front, yeah. Fork brace. If anybody's interested in a fork brace, go to VulcanBagger.com. Uh, there was a guy that was making fork braces once upon a time. I don't know if he still does. Uh, but that is a brace. Front end on my bike's also lowered. I didn't, I've probably never told y'all that. Uh, that's got a progressive kit in it. Uh, lowers it right at about an inch. Uh, they actually claim two inches. You could go up to two inches, but when I got the kit, um, it pretty much said don't go beyond one inch of lowering. So we stopped at one. Fork fluid. I'm actually running a 30 weight in this thing. And there's another video on fork fluid changes on my channel. But if you ever want to change your fluid, there's actually a drain plug right up here. Um, look for that video. Um, it's pretty detailed on how to change your, your forks, your fluid. All right, guys, I'm trying to think. Engineered adapters for six and a half inch speakers if you want to do that. But that's it. That's all I got. Tell you what, let's do this. I'm gonna hit pause one second. Let me uh, turn it on. All right, the pause is over. Um, anybody that's ever watched in here, my videos knows. Uh, don't use a key for ignition anymore. Use this system. This is a digital dog, digital guard dog. Uh, they make remote ignition systems. So if you just really want to do a fob, that's the company to get in contact with. So let's let's run through how this works. This is both a sensor and a push button. If you push the button, your ignition is going to come on. If you just want it in a uh, nearby type state, what do you call that? Mine's going blank again. If you just want it the other way, like your car where you just walk up and you don't have to do anything, you can also do that with this remote. Uh, you got to program it, and uh, it's not hard to do. So let's do this. Let's turn it on. Dang. Let's get rid of the alarm first. <clears throat> All right, alarm's off. All right, so as you can see, no key, no, no trickery here. It's in run mode. So once I push this button, we're up and rolling. Okay, so let's get rid of this stuff before it shuts me down. camera system we didn't talk about that either all right cameras had these cameras for a very long time there's my front dash cam ignitions on cameras are rolling that's how it works with this bike um, got one on the rear as well right up here you see it there it is so both ways rear lights here we go guys that's the rear lights so the ignition's on, so we got all our lights going. So in the dark, they do, the tinted ones do well by themselves. Um, those bag lights really add a lot. I like them. Um, so that's how that works out. Alright guys, I think that's... Uh, gonna be it here's the GPS let's I've got a lot of switches also here's a switch these are my amber lights <clears throat> we get up here for a second so as you can see nothing's on just my signal lights that's what they look like if I flip this switch for the halo four and a half inches so now we, we flip this switch right here now we've got lights lights we go back off and kill it the GPS switch I've also got a switch for that we'll cut that on so there it is we'll agree and uh, as you can see just a really nice screen real nice screen So, now we've got to be done. Let's do a hazards and, and I'm saying goodbye. I'm gonna tell y'all where to get some oil. And that's gonna be it. And when you turn the switch off, see the Garmin says, hey, we lost power. 
Um, if you want to keep going, hit cancel, it'll run on battery power, otherwise it's going to turn off. So this is what you basically your signals are going to look like. And of course you're going to have to get a run, um, some equalizers or some um, something else to, to eliminate your uh, hyper flash when you do this kind of stuff. Especially, especially whenever you start mixing. If you do this and you start mixing the brake light and the signal light, you, you really have to do something. Because what's going to happen is you're not going to have hyper flash maybe in the beginning. And then when you pull the brake, there's extra uh, voltage because these are LED lights, right? And then you'd be on an LED light here. It throws everything just off balance and it, you've got to figure out a way to get rid of that hyper flash. So you got to put some ohms in there to, to eat up some of it. All right, what were we doing? Let me show you the front and then that's it. There's the front. And of course these, they should do the exact same thing as this light, but they don't. They stay white. And I thought that was gonna bug me, but uh, I'm okay with it. It's not the end of the world. It's fine. All right guys, we're done. That's it. I never thought of the name of the company that did this uh, trim, but this is the other piece of trim here. I never thought of it. Cycle. God, it's on the tip of my tongue. Ah, gonna come to me. All right, www.metricoil.com. Go see what you want. And uh, I guess that's it, guys. See you next time.